So one of the main groups of fungi are ascomycetes. And a very common disease found in this group is powdery mildew, and it can affect ornamental flowers, shrubs, grasses, fruit trees, but only flowering plants. Conifers do not get this disease. And unlike downy mildew, which we already talked about, you can find um, the fruiting bodies on either the top or the bottom surface. And if you remember, with the downy mildew, it's only found on the underside. Here's what it looks like with apples. Very common on the rose family. Actually, uh, won't be long now. You'll probably start to see this on your flowering pears when you're out on your field trips looking at your plant ID plants. This is on grape, and this is a real problem because in many cases, powdery mildew does not affect fruit. You'd see that in the squash that you might see at the end of the summer. Um, but for wine growers, it's a real problem. It definitely affects the fruit. And powdery mildew does not need free moisture like some of the fungi do. It's basically something that happens with weather. It's associated with hot days and cool nights. And uh, as I said, real problem for grape growers. Here's what it looks like on the leaf. If you look closely here, here are the upright threads and chains of spores under magnification. Okay, very common on rhododendrons, and it looks a lot different than it does on many plants. And you can even see from the leaves I'm showing here that there's three different looks. But if you were to turn on the underside, you would see fruiting bodies. Okay, here's another indicator. And you can see the spores on the, uh, the bud scales, but uh, it almost looks like a virus, really. But if you turn the underside of the leaf, you would see fruiting bodies. Okay, here's some more of that. Mahonia gets powdery mildew, very common. So as I mentioned, it's favored by humid conditions, such as occur when days are warm and nights are cool. This is often at the end of the summer. That's why you often see this on squash at the end of the summer. And as I said, you don't need free water. It does prefer young succulent tissue, so over fertilizing can increase the problem. So you manage it by uh, the conditions for the disease. So providing air circulation, avoid poorly drained soils, rake and destroy infected plant material because it will just reinfect. So powdery mildew's uh, spores cannot survive on a film of water. They actually absorb so much water that they rupture. So you could actually use water as a management tool. And it is one of the few fungi pathogens that actually can be cured with products. Uh, this is actually a product that is um, was based on a Cornell recipe for using back baking soda and it actually will cure um, powdery mildew and it's a minimum risk pesticide. Okay, anthracnose, very common. Anthracnose is a, that's really a common name for diseases. There's many organisms associated with the name anthracnose. Um, but Pacific dogwood is very susceptible to anthracnose. Cornus Florida here is moderately susceptible. It's a real problem on the East Coast. So you get these brown blotches at or near the leaf tip. So what happens is the leaves from above will drip onto your leaves and it just roll down the main vein and just continuing to move down to the other leaves. You often end up with uh, dead gray leaves that just kind of hang on um, and they may stay on all winter and spring so sanitation is really key here. Okay here's a lovely specimen. And again, here's the leaves kind of hanging on. 
So management includes pruning out and destroying infected twigs. Of course you want to clean your pruners in between cuts and you definitely want to rake and destroy fallen leaves. Do not put this in your home compost. You can probably send it in your yard waste. It usually gets hot enough at places like Cedar Grove where it actually may kill off the spores. Um, no overhead watering and there are some resistant Kusa cultivars and Milky Way and Steeple are two of these cultivars. So Rose Black Spot is a way of life in the Pacific Northwest. It overwinters on living or dead plant tissue and so your newly emerging leaves are most susceptible. You quite, quite often see this like really coming up in May and June. Um, splashing up can actually spread the disease so if there's a way you can situate some drip irrigation and cover the uh, misters with mulch so it doesn't splash back up. Um, the other thing you could try is raising up the canopy so there's no splash back. So one of the reasons you hear about not watering in the evening is with fungi they need to stay on a surface to infect and it can be as little as two hours but in the case of rose black spot it takes at least nine hours for the spore to actually enter the leaves and then fruiting bodies will form on the spots from 11 to 30 days and then the cycle is ready to begin again within 10 to 18 days so it's a, a never-ending cycle so rainy temperatures periods of temperatures between 50 and 80 de degrees uh, favor a disease so as I said you know when you get into May and June this is perfect time for that You'll also see it on the stems. So the infected leaves produce ethylene and ethylene will actually encourage leaf drop. It'll also lead to low vigor, you won't have good blooms, and then it'll be very susceptible to winter injury. So you want to plant resistant cultivars and I did list, uh, put a list from Pacific Northwest Disease Handbook on resistant cultivars. You want to avoid dense plantings and shaded areas and avoid overhead watering. You want to rake up and destroy all leaves in a planting at the season's end. Even better, when they're, the leaves are yellow, just go ahead and pull them off. Um, you want to prune your canes back to two buds if the canes are infected. And then remove and destroy diseased canes before bud break. So this might be a good winter thing to do.